Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we'll talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. Today we will talk about excipients which are used in different types of dosage forms. But first let's see what are excipients. So the term excipient is derived from an Italian term excipere which means to accept. Pharmaceutical excipients are substances other than API that have been appropriately evaluated for safety and are intentionally included in a drug delivery system. There are some ideal properties of an excipient like it should be stable and reproducible, it should have no interaction with the drug, it should be pharmacologically inert, it should have desired functionality and it should be cheap, it should not be like it is costlier than the API. Excipient play different roles in a formulation like it aids in the processing of the drug delivery system during its manufacturing like we add glidant and lubricant in solid dosage forms protect, support or enhance stability, bioavailability or patient acceptability like antioxidant preservatives, assist in product identification and enhance the attribute of the overall safety like we add colorants, assist in effectiveness or delivery of the drug in use for example we add uh, permission enhancers in the formulation and finally they assist in maintaining the integrity of the drug product during storage like we add stabilizers or buffer which maintain the integrity of the API during storage. Now let's see main excipients used in different types of dosage forms. So we have tablet dosage form, then we have capsule dosage form, then we have dried powder or granules in form of sachet, then we have syrups in liquid dosage forms, then we have injectable dosage forms, then we have creams and then we have ointments. Now let's see the excipients used in all of these dosage forms. First is the tablet dosage form. In this we have diluents or fillers which is added to produce the bulk of the tablet. Examples are lactose, sucrose etc. Then we have binders which binds the tablet ingredients together to avoid separation. Example are cellulose, PVA, starch paste etc. Then we add disintegrants which breaks the tablet upon contact with water for faster release of the drug. Example are PVP, CMC etc. Then we add glidants which promotes powder flow by reducing interparticle friction. Examples are silica, talc, etc. Then we add anti-adherents which reduce adhesion between particles or granules. Examples are talc, starch, magnesium stearate. And we add colors and flavors to improve the appearance of the tablet and mask the bitter taste. Examples are indigo, lemon flavor, etc. Then we have capsule dosage form. In this first is the shell material which forms the capsule body to fill the material and it is mostly gelatin type A and type B. Then we add plasticizer which imparts softness and elasticity to the capsule shell, example is glycerol. Then we add diluent or filler which increases the bulk of the powder to be filled in the capsule, example is the same sucrose and lactose as we have seen in the tablet. Then fourth is disintegrant which breaks the capsule upon contact with water for faster release of the drug example is cross carmolus sodium etc. Then we add solubility enhancers which increases the solubility of the drug like twin 80 etc. And then we add antimicrobial agents which preserve the capsule shell and the filled content like propyl paraben. Then we have liquid oral dosage forms like syrups. In this first is vehicle which dissolves or suspends the API. In most of the cases it is water. Then we add sweetening agent which imparts the sweetness like liquid glucose or sucrose. Then we add a thickening agent which increases the viscosity and increases the contact time with the throat. Examples are glycerin or propylene glycol etc. Then we add buffer which maintain an optimum pH for dissolution and solubility of the API. Example of buffer are citric acid, sodium citrate. Then we add flavors which impart flavor and examples are menthol, raspberry flavor etc. And since the vehicle is water in this case, so we add antimicrobial agent in this which prevents the microbial growth and examples are ethanol, benzoids, potassium sorbate etc. Then we have powders or granules packed in the form of sachet. In this we have diluents, binders, disintegrants, flow enhancers, sweetening agents and flavoring agents. All these excipients are similar to those of tablet excipients. The only difference is it is not compressed in form of tablet. Then we have injectable dosage forms. In this first is the vehicle which is water in most of the cases except intramuscular injection which has oil as the vehicle. 
Then we have a solubilizing agent which is added to increase the solubility of the drug. For example, PEG, DMA or castor oil. Then we add tonicity modifiers which maintains the osmolarity as that of the blood. For that we add sodium chloride or dextrose. Then we add buffers which adjust the pH for solubilization and stabilization of API. Examples are acetate buffers, citrate buffers. We add chelating agents which forms complex with heavy metals and improves the efficacy of antioxidants and preservatives. Example is EDTA. Then we add antioxidants which prevents the oxidation of API. Example are BHA, BHT, sulfides, etc. And we add preservatives which prevent the growth of microorganisms like BKC, benzyl alcohol, methyl paraben, propyl paraben, etc. Then we have topical creams which is oil in water emulsion in most of the cases. The vehicle is water. Then we have emollient which provides smoothness and hydrates the skin. Example is isopropyl maristate, castor oil, PEG, paraffin wax, etc. Then we add an emulsifying agent which emulsifies oil with water, example is glycerol stearate, polysorbates, sterile alcohols, SLS, etc. Then we add a rheological modifier which provides viscosity to the cream, example CMC, HPMC, xanthan gum, sodium alginate, etc. And since the vehicle is water, we add a preservative which inhibits the microbial growth, example parabens, benzalkonium chloride, phenoxyethanol, etc. We add antioxidants to prevent the oxidation of oil, example BHA, BHT. And to increase the aesthetics, we add fragrance and color to the creams. Then we have topical ointments and depending upon the type of ointment, the base can be liquid paraffin, beeswax, wool fat, PEG 200, 300, 400 etc. Other than this, we add rheology modifier, an emulsifier, antioxidants and preservatives to the ointments. All these excipients are similar to that of cream formulation. So guys this was all about excipients used in different types of formulations. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you liked it and if you did, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.